This is or Greg. He works at XL Marine and is responsible <laughs> for the work on the engines. And that's Fred. Look, there's a he four is million responsible boat for the, other side of the, the metal no, no. solar panel Cali, rack on the back of the boat. The amount of money they gave and those the guys boat. are finally pulling out that boat that went sunk there. And here we are, going pretty fast. Driving. And we're only at about 3,000 RPM, and these engines are good for up to about 4,500. Greg is adjusting the trim tabs a little bit at the moment. Oh, okay. slowing back down now. Here I am driving the boat. And the thing in my mouth is my hardcore Henry camera rig. You haven't seen the first movie ever shot in first person view. Hardcore Henry is very exciting. Here I am learning to use the autopilot. Okay, so. And I have just have disengaged it. Your teething ring in. So I can, now drive, I can drive the boat drive. manually. And I'm just going to line up with the bridge up ahead and then restart the autopilot. Mainly to make sure that I know how. And the touch screen seems to require more than one press at times, but it's a minor inconvenience at most. And Greg is shooting some video while I'm playing with the boat. Here I can make alterations to the course while the autopilot is running. There's a button for turning left or right one degree and buttons for turning left and right ten degrees at a time. And Greg is continuing to shoot more video of the boat while I drive. This is a depth sounder. And there are actually two on the boat. One works with the multifunction display that is the autopilot and chart plotter. But it's nice to have a second depth display so that I can use the chart plotter to show me the channels, safe channels through shallow areas and also at the same time be able to see the other depth sounder display so that I know that sand hasn't drifted into the channel or that maybe I'm not where I think I am. At any rate, it's nice to be able to have the depth sounder always displaying while I use the multifunction display for other things. Off, and yes, I know I can have like a split screen or a three-way split screen on the chart plotter, but it's just nice to have a separate depth display. Since I'm driving the boat, it's going about six miles an hour now. This seems to be this, the best compromise between speed and range. If I try to go much faster, then I start burning fuel at a much higher rate and decrease my range. That's the, that was the chart plotter. And this is the autopilot display. This is an experiment that I've wanted to do for a while. I'm now driving the boat with just one engine. And because I can pivot the outdrives to vector the thrust, yeah. I can go straight. Try the other one. A lot of people had told me that twin engine boats don't have enough rudder authority to self-rescue if you have an engine out. But outdrives are 
very, very cool because you can, as I said, vector the thrust and drive straight. Here we are arriving back at the boat ramp and this is what we found when we got back there. Somebody was launching their boat and got a little over enthusiastic and so now their pickup truck is in the water. Fortunately, Jeff was coming to pull my boat out and he will rescue this guy. And everybody seems to have showed up. There was the fire truck. Some police arrived later. By the time we're through, there will be an ambulance and a news truck. But right now, Jeff is here. That's his blue truck there. And the trailer behind it is my trailer that he was just coming to pick up I my boat with. I got an extra anchor rope, if that helps. But okay. being the extremely helpful person he is, Jeff is going to help this guy rescue his pickup truck. So that's the guy who drove his truck into the water. Jeff told him he was willing to pull the guy's truck out, but he wasn't going to go in the water. There's Channel 2 News. And the ambulance was there. And here's the first part of pulling the truck out. It came out in several stages. There was a problem getting the truck out of park initially. And then there was a lot of resistance because the trailer attached to the truck had fallen off the end of the boat ramp and was hanging down into deeper water. So it took quite a pull to get it back up onto the ramp. And by now there's quite a crowd gathered to watch the show. Here we go. Finally, this guy's truck is back on solid ground. And we can pull my boat out of the water and back to the shop. And there's the trailer. That at first, nobody knew it was attached to the truck. And that's just it for another exciting day on the water. With special thanks to Jeff and Greg from XL Marine in Merritt Island, Florida.